All right, back for a bodybuilding and basics. It's been a little minute. Um, we've really been enjoying this series and you guys have been asking for more. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go into something today which is gonna be rather generic, but at the same time very important and fundamental, which is the point of this series. This series is not meant to blow your mind with science or, or you know, uh, introduce you to things that are far beyond. Um, it's to remind you of some of the fundamentals that we sometimes forget about that are the necessary factors in order to even get off the ground. So uh, today, really, five tips to grow muscle as quick as possible. And uh, this is going to be a list of five things that I think are the most valuable tools in order to see that done. Um, there is no secrets like take this drug, take that drug. This is literally the things that come before any of that. We'll start with one thing, which is absolute adherence, which the absolute adherence is first because everything that comes after that has to be adhered to to the T. Um, so you have to train yourself to be someone who can absolutely lock in, focus, um, adhere to a plan, and basically just not switch in and out of wanting to be a bodybuilder or not, because many people are a bodybuilder for two weeks on end, then they have a week off, go out and get pissed. Bodybuilding is not something you can do that with. You have to adhere and you have to stay with it, stick to it. Um, it's a long course, but it's a long course that pays off when you uh, do it for you know, for the love of it and you actually give it your full attention. Um, you know, just before we move on, take me for example, first bodybuilding show was 2008, uh, 2020, I'm now an IFBB pro with a couple of wins behind my belt. Um, so it didn't come overnight guys, it takes a long time, but that is something that only was possible through adherence. So number two, training intensity. Now training intensity is something that's very obviously independent to what the individual was able to do and their output is only something that, that can be measured by them. Um, the main thing I'm just trying to get across here is that you need to be training at a maximum capacity of your own potential. Potential is all different. Some people can train a lot harder than others, that's true. Some people can train a lot heavier than others, that's true. But if you're training at the closest possible to your maximum output and your maximum potential, then you're gonna be able to see the rewards in the quickest changes to your physique when it comes to muscle growth, um, you know, density, all in all, just actually just growing and making sure that you become the best bodybuilder you can. And it goes with the absolute adherence because you need to take that training intensity into the room every time that you train. And you need to make sure that you don't slack at any one of those training sessions. Every session has to be you going in there and working your absolute ass off. Unless it's a particular time in your bodybuilding career that requires you to scale back a touch, which does come here and there. But other than that, and if there's an excuse to do that, you should be training to, you know, absolute highest intensity possible. Um, the word intensity, don't get too confused. Some people like to go really deep into that and say, it's not about weight, it's about connection. It's not about connection, it's about weight. It's not about this, it's about reps. Really, it's just about effort. So it's about going in there, whatever rep range you're doing, working your ass off, making sure you're dying by the time you get to the end of it. If you've got 10 reps to achieve today, make sure you're dying by rep nine and rep 10 is an absolute struggle. Uh, and that's the simplest way for me to, to put that. Um, with that, if you really do want to be able to reach your maximum intensity when you're training, I would be someone that would suggest trying to have a training partner uh, so that it allows you to go into those parameters, which is beyond failure. If you don't, if you're un unable to have someone there with you, then what I would suggest is that you throw in some intensity techniques like rest pause, um, drop sets, anything like that that allows you to intensify the workout and make it harder than it would be if you were just training with straight sets, for example. So let's move on to number three. Uh, managing rest okay rest is when you grow rest is when you change rest is when you recover if you're not resting you're not going to see the changes you can stimulate your body as much as you like with the training and force the uh, the process to begin but if you don't allow the process to finish with the rest then you're never going to see the benefits of all of that training that you've been trying to put your you know masses of effort into so managing rest is simply just about keeping an eye on the body keeping an eye on when it's feeling overly taxed. Um, you know, if, if you get up one day and everything's aching and lifting your arms is an effort, then that's a surefire way to understand that perhaps today isn't the day you should go and train. I don't care what anybody says about, oh, you should just train regardless. You know, you've got to be hardcore. The truth is your body gives you signs for a reason. And if everything's against you that day physically, even emotionally, then it might not be the day to train. Um, typically, I would say with most people, you can get away with training two days on, one day off. Um, that's just my generic template to how often you should train um, because that just sees that you just get enough rest in between those body parts in order to go again. 
Um, you might need to rest a bit more. You might you might be able to rest a bit less, but just from my own um, experience, I would say at least do one day's rest after every two days of weight training. Um, another thing that obviously is going to help with rest is some of the things that are further down the list, which leads us on to number four. And number four is obviously eating enough. And eating enough basically means whatever period you are in in your training, you need to be eating enough food to accompany the goal. And obviously this is the five tips to grow muscle quick. The word grow meaning that we need to be eating in a surplus. So we need to be eating more than is actually required in order to survive, um, to allow us to accumulate new tissue and new muscle growth. Um, this is something that we'll also over time have to increase as the days pass and as the body um, gets more and more uh, workload on it, because obviously recovery is gonna become harder to achieve. Uh, the more muscle you put on, the more calories you're gonna require to sustain that new muscle growth. And therefore it's gonna be a slow taper up in accordance to match uh, the new muscle that you are putting on yourself. So eating enough is something that you really need to make sure that you have uh, on lock. The best way to do that obviously is to keep a diary, a food diary of some sorts. Um, whether you just write down your macros for the day or if you write down your exact meals. And then as time passes, if you look at some of the previous videos when we're talking about nutrition itself, you would make some of the adjustments that the previous videos suggest, like adding carbohydrates here, adding carbohydrates there, um, upping fats, upping protein, etc., just so that your total calories are moving in a direction along with your body's response to training, which is growing, which is what we're trying to do here. Um, the biggest mistake that probably people make when they're trying to grow is not eating enough. And it probably will get to the point where you feel uh, somewhat difficult to eat. And if that does happen, then that's when the introduction of you know, cardiovascular activity in the mornings, uh, gentle walks in the day between meals, things like that will always help aid digestion. So really you can never eat enough um, as long as you're training extremely hard. So if the training intensity from number two is extremely high, you will be able to eat more. So they, they're a marriage, you know, made. And then in turn for that, the harder you're training, the more it's important that you get that rest. So these three previous mentioned uh, topics all go hand in hand. They're part of a, a triforce of importance that has to be monitored uh, exceptionally closely. Uh, and then the final thing I would say is just a little bit more specific, but it's choosing your exercises and getting the most bang for your buck when it comes to those. Because obviously you're only allowed in the gym for a specific amount of time, well, allowed. You're only in the gym for a specific amount of time. You don't want to be in there forever. It does come down to the point about trading your exercises for ones that would be the most beneficial to you to see the changes occur that you're wishing to get. So, you know, if I was to say to you, you've got 10 minutes in the gym, you're only going to be able to hit two chest exercises. And you came to me and you said, let's hit pec fly on cables and let's hit press ups. You think that's going to be the most rewarding and most beneficial two exercises you could have done in that 10 minutes? No fucking way. So I would have said to you, do you need to do some incline barbell press and some incline dumbbell fly, for example? So already you can just see I've just traded two exercises for two that would 100% give you more back for the effort that you're putting in, um, especially for what we're trying to achieve here. You're trying to achieve muscle mass. So you can load up a barbell. You can't load up a, 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 um, a press up. You can't really load up a cable fly. You've got to think about the amount of stress that you can apply to a muscle group in the shortest period of time and get the most out of it so that you can go away go home follow these other factors and get back in the gym in a few days time and go again so choosing your exercises is so 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 important that you can't take that for granted you know you might have a gym full of really really nice machines but i would always suggest that you need to make sure that there's a few compound exercises there in your plan uh, that are really really attacked with the intensity that we've mentioned earlier um, in order to get the response that you're trying to get. So, um, you know, if I was to send you in the gym and I was going to say, let's train back today. If I gave you a back workout and every single exercise was on cables and I give someone else a, a workout where two or three of the exercises involve dumbbell rows and barbell rows, I can pretty much guarantee that the guy who's doing the dumbbell rows and barbell rows is probably going to get a little bit more out of it over time. Um, and that's something that you can't afford to miss out on. You know, unless you have an injury or something specifically holding you back from doing particular exercises, try to get yourself doing those big compounds, um, not just from a muscle building standpoint, but also from a conditioning standpoint. They will help with your fitness, they'll help with your form, they'll help with your ability to connect with your muscle because it's not laid out for you. You're creating bar paths, you're controlling dumbbells, 
you're training yourself to be someone who's good at doing weights. So the benefits totally outweigh those of machines. Uh, I'm not saying there isn't a place for machines because there certainly is and they should be utilized, but perhaps somewhere later in the workout when fatigue starts to kick in and you just want to focus purely on force. Um, so yeah, so let's just skim back quickly. Number one, absolute adherence. So that just means don't fuck around. Make sure you keep everything in check and uh, never, never think to yourself, oh, you know what? I've done two days of really good work. Maybe I deserve a break now because that isn't the case. You need to follow this plan and you need to stick to this plan for as long as possible. Um, and you only get the respite when it's kind of earned and that's like post-show, something like that when you've really, really pushed the limits. Uh, training intensity, remember guys, go in the gym, if it's going to be a half ass workout, you're better off going home, recouping, going back when you know you can give it your all. Uh, managing rest, making sure you sleep, you, uh, you know, not even just sleep, but mentally rest, you know, stress, everyday life stresses can be too much sometimes for some people. So make sure you're someone who does everything you can in order to control the amount of stress that's going on in here, because that will certainly help with your physique as well. Uh, eating enough is obviously uh, a, a fundamental part, so you've got to make sure you get those meals in on a daily basis, but at the same time, logging that, making sure, and adjusting as you grow. And then finally, guys, the bang for your buck exercises. Don't go in the gym and pussy around. Don't miss the exercises that are going to work. Make sure you put them at the forefront of your workouts. Give them your absolute attention. Progress on them, get strong on them, and uh, they will reward you in return. So... Right guys, understandably right now, depending on where you are in the world, this crazy time, gym access might be an issue. So on the back of this video, I just want to say this, that in the meantime, this is a, is a very, um, it's an abnormal time. So I don't want you to be critical on yourself if some things can't be adhered to, like the equipment, for example, like using exercises that are what I would say the best. Right now, it's just about trying your best being the best you can be. So if you're at home and you're unable to use gym equipment or you have limited equipment like barbells and such, just make sure you're working hard. If you can keep that intensity factor up right now and the rest factor and the eating enough, then to be fair, you're still gonna be able to at least maintain if not progress on certain things. So um, just take that into account. If, you know, if you've got a bar, a couple of dumbbells, there's a lot you can do. Um, Worst case scenario, if you have to do body weight, you do it. But what you do with the body weight is you just make sure that you're training very intense, rest periods are very short, uh, superset exercises, giant set exercises, take your body to that fatigue and uh, make sure that you just work really hard. Obviously, this isn't going to be forever. Uh, this is a temporary thing. And obviously, once doors are back open again in the gyms, then we can literally get these five, uh, five factors laid out in exactly how we want them and we can adhere to them as much as possible. Uh, so like I say, in the meantime, guys, it's just about doing your absolute best. Um, follow, I'm gonna say this now actually, John Lofthouse has been doing some good videos where he's out in the basketball court doing some uh, training with just a set of dumbbells and a few bands. So do check that out because there's a few good ideas there and I think that's great for people to see. And he's a professional and he's managing to maintain an excellent physique doing so. So there's no reason why us guys can't too. Guys, that's a very basic, but a very, very important little list there. And uh, I guarantee some of you have been doing this long enough that you've kind of drifted away from some of these things and forgotten them. So it's great for you guys to hear this again. Uh, some others who are new to the game need to hear this just because you're new to the game. And there's also for guys like me, it's never a bad time to remind yourself of what's important and go through things over again, just so that you remind yourself of the things you should be doing in order to continue progressing. So uh, I've read this list myself right now. You guys have heard the list. Uh, it's a good time to do it. I'm gonna be going into an off season. So I'll be running through this in my mind every day, every time I try to execute exercises, every time I sleep, every time I train. And uh, just gonna remember that it comes down ultimately to these five fundamentals. And I hope that helped. And you guys got any questions on this particular video? I'd love to hear them. If you want to dive into any little bit more detail on any one of these particular subjects, comment below and we'll do our best to either get back to you in the comment section or save it for a further video where we can dive into a little bit more depth. So guys, that's been Bodybuilding the Basics today. Peace and love. I'm going to enjoy my coffee. Nice to be back and we will catch you very soon.